There's a very strong sense of community here. Uh, people are very welcoming and supportive, particularly when you're going through difficult times. The church just rises up with so much strength and compassion. Ministry of our male chorus, you know, we, it's just a blessing uh, to see men who are not ashamed to praise God and and to challenge us to just hold on, hold on and not let go. God bless you. It is time for the word of God. We are returning to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19. I will begin reading at the very first verse of that chapter and uh, read through the 10th verse, Luke 19, 1 through 10. And it reads as follows. Then Jesus entered and pass through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they, somebody say they, they. saw it, they all complained, saying he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. And then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Lord, look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This morning, I would like to speak to you from this thought. He knows your name. All right. He knows your name. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for this day. What a great and glorious day this is. We are just in awe of the miracle of simply being alive today with the use and the activity of our limbs and clothes in our right mind. We thank you for the desire to leave our homes and make our way into this sacred place. But now that we are here, we want to thank you for the blessing of being in the fellowship of other believers, for the experience of being able to praise your name freely without fear of oppression or retribution. We thank you for the blessing and the miracle of your presence in this place. But we also acknowledge that we need a word from the Lord today. We need a word that will speak into our lives individually and collectively. That it will be planted in the fertile soil of our spirits. That it will go down deep and take root, produce fruit that will make us strong in the days and weeks to come. That our lives will bring glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, we live in a celebrity-crazed culture that causes many of us to be awestruck when we find ourselves in the presence of some very important person. Because meeting famous people, gives us the opportunity to name drop 
because we have met someone that most of our friends have not. You know, I can truthfully say that I've met Denzel Washington, Ella Fitzgerald, Maya Angelou, Ruby Dee and Ossie Davis, Catherine Dunham, Alex Haley, even stayed at uh, the house of Cedric Dana Taylor in Los Angeles. <laughs> but just because you can name drop, it doesn't mean that you really know that person. And you can be sure they don't know you or remember your name. But I believe that everyone longs to have a relationship with someone who truly knows you. Someone who gets your sense of humor. Someone who accepts your unusual ways. Someone who can see something in you that others can't see. Someone who is willing to spend time with you, even on your worst days. And if you have ever experienced the blessing of having someone like that in your life, then you know that there is something special about how they speak your name. For most of us, no one could call your name like your mother. When she added some extra syllables and your middle name, you knew not only that she knew you, but that you better stop whatever it was that you were doing and see what she wanted. But you know, unfortunately, we are living in a world of instant gratification where people seldom take the time to really get to know each other. You know, we buy fast food at the drive-thru and then complain because it took too long. <laughs> we eat on the run. We sit down at the dinner table with a fork in one hand and a cell phone in the other <laughs> because we don't have time to really talk to each other. We choose to have Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram friendships with people that we have never seen face to face. Because truly, getting to know someone makes us feel too vulnerable and insecure. We take selfies with a filter <laughs> that makes us look skinny, smooth, and glamorous because we believe nobody wants to really see us as we really are. Some even reject the name that your parents gave you. Choose something else that you think is more exotic, more edgy, more cool. You know your name is Jennifer, not Sheba. <laughs> we want to manufacture an image, an identity that suits who we wish we could be. And when it is all said and done, we can easily find ourselves surrounded by beautiful, bodacious, fabulous, fantastic, well-educated and influential, even righteous and religious people that we don't really know and who certainly don't know us. But the good news that I met a man long ago who is known all over the world. He knows everybody. He has all the right connections. And you'll never meet anybody quite like him because he's just as comfortable with the rich and famous as he is with the meek and lowly. And moreover, he's always willing to talk with you face to face regardless of who you are. In fact, when you're with him, 
You can even have that feeling that he's like somebody you've known all your life. Yeah, all right, all right. A friend who knows you better than you know yourself. Yeah. And according to Acts 9, Saul met this same somebody when he was traveling on the road to Damascus. Yeah. The Bible says that Saul had an impressive family history that afforded him the resources to have the best education that money could buy. In fact, Saul described himself as a Hebrew of Hebrews. Saul was so steeped in the strict practice of Jewish laws and traditions that he viewed anyone who did not agree with what he believed as a threat. And so he used his power and authority as a Pharisee, the Bible says, to breathe out threatenings or to pursue an agenda to persecute any man or woman he could find who believed in Jesus because he did not. The Bible states that Saul was heading to Damascus on his bloodthirsty mission when suddenly there was a blinding light that appeared from heaven brighter than the noonday sun. And I don't know if Paul was walking or if he was riding in a chariot or riding on the back of a mule, but the Bible says the light knocked him down to the ground. And according to the fourth verse, when he found himself alone, blind and face down in the dirt, Saul knew that he was in trouble. Because the voice that spoke to him from the light called him by his name and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? When you reach a place where something in your life needs to change, you can expect to have an encounter experience like Saul from this same somebody who not only knows your name, but also knows where you've been, where you are, and where you're going. Someone who knows everything about you. Someone who is able to look beyond the image that you project to the world and see the real you that nobody else knows about. And when this someone calls you by your name, who is not impressed by your education, not impressed with your family history, not impressed with your wardrobe, your bank account, or your prominence or prestige in the community, or anything else that you think makes you better than somebody else. You're going to cry out just like Saul did and say, who are you, Lord? The response to Saul's question changed his life. The voice that spoke from within the light said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. I know you, but you don't know me. So let me introduce myself. I'm Jesus. I'm not dead. I'm alive. I'm Jesus. I'm not untouchable. I'm right here, right now. I'm Jesus. And I'm speaking to you so that you can know that I'm the same Jesus yeah. that called Adam by name yeah. when he failed to be obedient to what I had commanded him to do. Yeah. I'm the same Jesus yeah. that called Abraham by name right. when I challenged his faith to leave his home yeah. and go wherever I would lead him. I'm the same Jesus yeah. that called Moses by name yeah. from the burning bush when it was time for him to leave the security of the desert and walk into his destiny. I'm the same Jesus that called Lazarus by name and raised him from the dead to prove that God still hears and answers when we pray. I'm the same Jesus that called Simon by name and then changed his name to Peter and made him the foundation of my church in spite of his failures and his flaws. And the good news of the gospel is that the same Jesus calls us by our name. Because just like Jeremiah, he knew 
us before we were formed in the belly of our mothers. He calls us by name because just like David, he's the only one who knows what's truly in our hearts. He calls us by name because just like Mary, he knows that we are favored in his sight and destined to be blessed. He calls us by name because just like Saul on the Damascus road, he knows where we have done, but he also knows what we are destined to become. So regardless of where we are on our journey, even in those moments when you feel alone, blind, and lost, the Lord still speaks to us through the words spoken by his prophet. In Isaiah 43 and 1, he says, But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. You are not an accident or an afterthought. You are not a mistake or a misfit. You are not a should have been or would have been. You have been redeemed because he called you by your name and claimed you as his own. When you were confused, he called you by your name. When you were hurting, he called you by your name. When you felt like giving up, he called you by your name. When you stumbled and fell, he called you by your name. When you cried alone in the midnight hour, he called you by your name. When your heart was broken, he called you by your name. When there was an appointed time for your life to change, he called you by your name. He called you by your name. And he said, you are mine. And I know Jesus for myself. And anytime I need him, all I got to do is call him and say, Jesus. He gave me the right to call him by his name. I can say, Jesus, when I'm lonely, Jesus. When I'm scared, Jesus. When I'm hungry, Jesus. When I feel by myself, Jesus. He called me by my name. That's why I'm grateful that the words that Jesus spoke to those who dare to question why he would use a sinner and call him by his name, those words are still being spoken in my behalf. But Jesus told them, look at here. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And I'm not ashamed to testify that I was lost until Jesus found me. I was drowning in my sin until Jesus saved me. I'm grateful today that Jesus knew I was worth saving. So he came in and changed my life. That Jesus knew that I was worth keeping. So he cleaned me up on the inside. Jesus knew that I was worth dying for. So he sacrificed his life. Jesus set me free, made me complete, so that I could stand, I could stand and proclaim that if he knows my name, he knows your name. Jesus. Jesus will call you. He'll claim you as his own. Jesus. He'll walk with you. He'll talk with you. Jesus, he'll turn your life around. Jesus, he'll make your heart brand new. When you know that he knows your name, ain't no fire can burn you. When you know that he knows your name, 
Ain't no storm can drown you. When you know that he knows your name, there's no mountain that can stop you, no giant that can tear you down. When you know that he knows your name, you're going to walk in victory and not defeat. When you know that he knows your name, you got all the power that you need. He knows your name. He knows your name. I'm grateful that he knows your name. He knows my name. And he claims you as his own. You might be running, but he said, hold up a minute. You belong to me. You might be wondering whether or not you're going to make it tomorrow. Jesus said, I know you. I know you. I was there before you. I was there when you were formed in the womb of your mother. I know you. Because I said, Lo, I'm with you always. That means I was there then. I'm here now. I'm going to be there in the future. I know you. I know your journey. I'm with you. You belong to me. Let's give God some praise.